Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Hiking the Wainwrights and welcome to the Langdale Valley. This is my first foray into the Langdale Valley in this entire series. So I'm very excited to be back here because this is actually one of my favourite valleys in the whole of the Lake District. So it's 20 past six in the morning. Why am I up so early? What am I doing? Well, it's bank holiday Monday. Today is going to be absolutely rammed full of tourists. So I thought I'd get to the old Dungeon Gill here, park up before it gets too busy and too crowded. Why am I parked up at the old Dungeon Gill? Well, I'm going to do Langdale Pikes. Probably the most iconic mountains in the Lake District. So let's go and have a look at the map and see the exact route and which fells we're going to be hitting today. So I've parked at the old Dungeon Gill and I'm going to walk back down the valley in the direction of the new Dungeon Gill. But before I get to Stickle Gill, I'm going to branch off and make my way up to Pike Howe for those spectacular views back down the valley. A bit more uphill and I'll reach the very popular Stickle Tarn, heading towards the bottom of North Rake, which is going to take me up to the summit of Paviark, then across to Thunacar Knot, and then over to Harrison Stickle, before making my way across to Pike Stickle. And then it's over to Loft Crag, followed by a rapid descent back into the valley that's going to take me beneath Raven Crag and straight into the pub. So that is the route. Do you recognise it? <laughs> if you have recognised it, it's because I've done it before. I've actually done a video of this exact route before. But to mix things up a little bit, I'm going to do it in reverse. And the reason I'm doing it again, the same route, is because, well, there's only so many routes you can do on this this particular walk that hit all the, the, um, the Wainwright tops. And I think this, personally, this is my, my favourite. So without further ado, let's get cracking get along here towards the new dungeon gill and then start making our way up and we'll start sweating there's a lot to be said for getting up and getting out early because you know you get these kind of places to yourself particularly places that are normally very very busy it's so nice to see it totally empty I'm loving the light in the cloud there. Hopefully that's coming out in the camera. And we've got Raven Crag here. Now, the last time I came up here, I think it was on Christmas Eve, about four or five years ago, on that video, I went up that way, up on the bottom of Raven Crag. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful part of the Lake District, the world, everything. So I'm looking forward to getting to that bit at the end of the day when I'm a little bit tired and enjoying that, knowing that I don't have a, a big walk ahead of me. Look at this. <laughs> Lovely. This is Dungeon Gill. And quite a special place, actually. A few years ago, I got off the beaten path a little bit and had a rummage round in Dungeon Gill Ravine itself. And it's a fascinating place. It's like the, the land that time forgot, you know. You can imagine dinosaurs up there and all sorts. Really, really interesting. Quite difficult to drop down into. It's quite steep ground. And then it's a little bit tricky getting out the top as well. There's a, a little bit of a, a moment where you've got to commit. And if you slip, you're probably going to die. <laughs> Sounds very dramatic, I know. But yeah, it's a little bit sketchy. Anyway, this is it. So if I have to carry on down here now, through that gate, I'd end up at the uh, new Dungeon Gill and um, the car park there, the National Trust car park, but we're not doing that, we're starting to go up. All up there, that's Pike Howe, that's the first mini summit of the day and something that I wanted to really incorporate into this walk because it's just, it's, well it's amazing, I said it last time, it's just a really amazing place with not a lot of effort to get there, so let's get up there. Just waiting for a little bit of light in the valley here. That'd be really nice, actually, wouldn't it? Just a bit early, I think. Um, maybe another 10, 20 minutes. A little bit rickety. The style, not just me. <laughs> okay, after the style, the path actually forks off. So there's a, a left fork and a right fork. We want the right fork because we're going to go up there alongside that wall. Well, it's about three minutes after I said that about the sun and we're getting it just here, look. And over on the crinkles.
Now it's quite nice to see the bracken dying back, which means hopefully less ticks, yay. But when you get here at this time of day and you're the first person passing through, you've got to deal with all the spiders in the webs, crisscrossing the path from piece of bracken to piece of bracken. This time of year, you just get covered in webs <laughs> and crawlies. Here comes the sun, look. That's looking very nice. Just hit the top of Pike of Blisco. And into the sun. Immediately spirits are lifted. And spirits are lifted even more because now I'm getting my first glimpse of Paviac. All the way in the distance there. It's looking very nice out to the south with Side Pike just here, Lingmoor, and we've got Weatherlam, and then obviously up to Pike of Blisco here. It's looking nice, the light's looking good, very promising. Well, it would be that blue sky, wasn't there? <laughs> and looking nice back out towards Windermere, just make out a little bit of Windermere there. All right, so just below Pike Howe, which is here, we get our first glimpse of Harrison Stickle. And that is the third Wainwright today that will be hitting. And the view from there, looking back that way, is quite staggering. But this here is Dungeon Gill. So the bit I mentioned earlier on when I was down there, way down there somewhere, crossing that bridge, I mentioned that you can get into Dungeon Gill and it's via that little bit there. So you come off the main path, you can see the main path going up and you get to that bit and you cut across and down. It's a bit sketchy, like I said, it's quite, it's quite a lot of scree there and it's a little bit dodgy. But once you're here, you go into this ravine and yeah, it is a very unusual but very interesting place. I think what I might do is actually come back and do a, a dedicated video to, to Dungeon Gill and have a mooch up there and and show you what it's like because you know you might not get the opportunity to come and you might want to see what it's like so yeah there's some nice light around it's looking it's looking really nice everywhere i don't know if i've got the camera set up right it might be a bit bright but yeah you get the idea right pike how is right here so let's get up there and enjoy the views back out towards windermere Alright, now getting a very good eye full of Harrison Stickle and the Paviac. But let's go and have a look at Pike Howe. Looks like someone's camping up there, or was last night. Good place to camp, actually, that. Must have been lovely there last night. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Great to meet you. We'll never meet anybody out doing this while I'm there. <laughs> So you've been camping last night, eh? Yeah, camping there. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Look at this. Oh, hey, Hurdy. <laughs> oh, damn it, didn't have my camera out. Ever so slightly jealous of this as a campsite. <laughs> damn it. This would be a, good <clears throat> a very good place to camp, actually. With it being relatively flat, relatively low level as well so you're not going to get battered too much and if it gets a little bit sketchy you can bail and you've got this view look at it i mean i've said it before in a previous video if you're not interested in going all the way up to the tops here then just coming to pike howe and getting a real taste of a the lake district and b the langdale pikes it's the perfect introduction and maybe even do a little circuit round so the, the bit i'm going to do in a minute up to stickle town and then you could pop back down the tourist track there to New Dungeon Gill. That would be a great introduction because, you know, you get all this for not a lot of effort. It's a little bit of effort, obviously, you know. You're gonna you're gonna sweat a bit, but it's quite nice and not too not too demanding and too far. Anyway, let's get on and uh, get up to Stickle Tan. Right, enjoy your walk out. See you later. Look at that. Oh man, that's a good hurdy shot, isn't it? 
I haven't got my camera out yet. I need to get my camera out. It's quite nice seeing Herdies because I was a little bit worried driving in up Langdale Valley. Now, if you're familiar with Langdale Valley, you'll know that as you drive along the road, there are Herdies all over the place on the road, you know, sleeping on the road walking, all that kind of stuff. But this morning, I didn't see any herdies. I saw loads of sheep, none of them were herdies. They were some other kind of, um, some other breed. It felt weird. Anyway, <sighs> they're all up here, which is good. Yeah, I really love this bit. As you get to the same level as Stickle Tarn, which is over there, I love this little bit. You, you cross over and drop down to it. It's, uh, it's a lovely spot. And in a minute, I mean, I can see loads of tents already. But in a minute we'll walk past Tent City. It's such a popular spot here for wild camping. Let's go and count the tents. Morning. Now I don't mean to be critical, but <laughs> that was an interesting pitch. Right on the path. I have to go right round. <laughs> okay, here we go. Stickle Tan. AKA Tent City. <laughs> Stickleville. <laughs> it's the most tents I've ever seen, I think. And down to the dam. So this is the main tourist track up, up Stickle Gill. And it's at this point we get this great view of Paviac. So we're gonna be going around the back, heading around that way, up onto North Rake up onto the summit. Now Jack's rake is across the front here. But first, we need to negotiate this. Wow, that wind's got up. As soon as I crossed Stickle Gill there, and onto this side of the town, it's got really windy. There's a daft place to camp over here. <laughs> really daft. Now then, Jack's rake. Why am I not doing Jack's rake? Well, I'm going to save that for another day, perhaps, and come and do a dedicated video just to that on a day when I'm not carrying like three kilos of very expensive glass on my back. <laughs> and uh, come here lightweight and do it justice, really. So that's why I'm going to do North Rake. It's a, it's a, a lot safer and a lot easier. As we head round the back of Paviac, up towards North Rake, it's quite a nice path actually. And uh, yeah, it feels very wild. I mean, look at it. Lovely. And that little knobble in front right there, that is Sergeant Man. That's where I was last week, stitching all these areas together quite nicely. It's not a bad example of moraine here as well. Look, little lumps. Another tent. <laughs> right, it's time to get sweaty again. Right, there's a very small section here of very easy scrambling. In fact, I'll tell you what, there's an easier bit just here. Look, if you go to the right, to the grass. And that is about as technical as this walk gets up on the North Rake. Okay, this is the top of Easy Gully here. So the bottom starts round about where Jack's Rake starts and comes up here. It's a little bit of a, a difficult boulder at the top. Uh, I might come and do a video of that as well one day, just to show it. Uh, but yeah, it's a bit of a misnomer, Easy Gully. Like, like all Easy Gullies, they're not never easy. Easy for the rock climbers, who use them to, you know, bomb it back down after climbing up the uh, the crag or wherever it is they are. But 
yeah, it's not easy for us mere mortals. So I got distracted then because from this vantage point, you really can see the moraine down there, can't you? Look at it. Love that. When you get to the easy gully bit, this is when this last section gets pretty damn steep. So I'm gonna get them head down and push on to the top. I'll see you up there. Okay, wind's getting up. So you know you're approaching the top. And sure enough, it's leveling off. Once you've done this, and you get to this level, you've pretty much broken the back of the whole uh, uphill climb today for the whole walk. Because all the peaks we're hitting today, they're all roughly the same height. You kind of have to dip, dip down between each one and back up a little bit. So it undulates, but it's, you know, it's nothing like that. Should be able to see them all in a minute, actually. Once I get to the top of Paviac, which is just over here. That's Thundercar, not right there, right in front. That's the next weighing right of today, after Paviac. Yeah, it's an interesting summit to navigate in the clag. It's like, well, where is, where is the summit? It can be quite confusing. It's just a mishmash of higgledy-piggledy rock all over the place. Okay, because this is all made of breccia, it's the grippiest rock known to man. You can literally run up it. It's amazing. Here we are on the summit of Paviac. And what a glorious summit it is. I mean, that is almost a vertical drop right down into Stickle Town. In fact, what I'll do in a minute, I'll drop down to that lump there and we'll see if we can get a uh, less obscured view of it. Nice, wasn't it? <laughs> and you can see Pike Howe now, Brown Cow, down there, <laughs> all the way down there. And obviously, Tent City. Uh, yeah, it's a great little summit. And, you know, later on today, no doubt, there'll be lots of people up here picnicking in various little nooks and crannies, because this is what it's like up here. There's lots of little places to tuck yourself away, get out the wind, get out the weather and uh, enjoy your butties. But at the moment, there's no one here. It's good. Half eight. So half eight, most people are probably just arriving into the valley. I think I might have to rug up in a minute though, because that wind is, is quite fresh. Let's drop down to that rock there and we'll get a better view of Stickletown. Oh, that's nice, out the wind. Flap an X, as soon as you drop down here. So much nicer. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, get on the rock. Oh yeah. <laughs> Whew. That made me feel a bit giddy then. Because <laughs> that is, this here, if this was polished and a bit slidey, I'd be worried now because I'd just slide right off. Definitely worth the effort getting up here, I think to get that view. Bit of an iconic view, actually. Right, let's get on to Wainwright number two. Thunder car not in that direction. Let's go. Whoa. Back out into the wind, flipping heck. Whew. So I'm pretty much heading straight back to the path that I was on when I came up um, North Rig. That's the easiest way. Okay, so this is the path that I came up after uh, Northrake, and you can see it carries on. So I've just come back down off Paviac this way, and now I'm gonna go off. It's a little bit boggy in places, uh, and the path is a bit faint as well in places. Right, I can see I need to be there, but I need to get across this thing. I don't get my feet too wet. Get across there to the rock, eat, fall back into the bog. <laughs> it's actually a really easy way to cross it there, but like a challenge, you know. Ooh, oh, <laughs> not that much of a challenge. Just fell right in up to well over my boot. I did have dry feet. I've still got one dry foot, but the other one is 
totally soaked now. Damn it. Yeah, I was meant to put my fleece on back there, but once again, I was lulled into a false sense of security out of the wind and forgot to put it on. But that northerly wind today, wow, it's cutting right through me. It definitely feels like summer is over. It's on the wane. Colder days are coming. Uh, start packing more layers, hats, gloves, that kind of stuff. Because soon it will be very cold. Right, here we are on Thunder Car Knot. Not a great one, has to be said. Even Wayne Wright didn't have much much good to say about this fell at all because, well, it's just rubbish. It's like a little lump on, on a ridge. <laughs> I mean, the only redeeming feature of this hill is the view out to the west. Yeah, that's looking very nice indeed. We can now see Pike Stickle, which is the second to last Wayne Wright today. And obviously now we can see out towards Crinkle Crags. The band is all lit up there. And the pointy one, that's Bowfell. The one in the cloud, that's Great End. The other one in the crowd, crowd, in the cloud is Great Gable. Very moody over there right now. Very moody indeed, which is, I like, I like that a lot. But yeah, why did he include this? Why? If he himself thought this was boring and just, pretty much didn't say anything nice about it at all. Why did he include it? Because now all us idiots have to come up here and tick it off. <laughs> Thanks to him. Okay, you can kind of see, hopefully on this camera, a little bit of a fork here in these grassy trods now. I suspect if I take the right one, it'll probably drop down into uh, Harrison Coombe. I don't want that. I want to go up to Harrison Stickle, so... Let's take the left path. Squelch, squelch, squelch. Here's a little bit squelchy around here. and stickle and it's always the rain some interesting weather coming in from the north you can see a rainbow there hopefully very nice just need some light on pike stickle happy days but let me spin you around so this is the third wayne right today and look at that <laughs> wonderful so see Pavey Arc over there. And you can actually just basically skirt all the way around here and come straight to Harrison Stickle, but because Wayne Wright put a thunder car knot on his book, we had to go and do that. <laughs> if you're not bothered about Wayne Wright, don't do it. Don't bother doing that one, just come straight here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you know, I think what I'm gonna do, once I've shown you over there, that bit looking back down towards the valley, is I'm gonna get out of this wind, I'm gonna sit here for a bit to see if anything exciting happens because all well, I can see is some really beautiful light there and some rainbow action going on, so it's worth hanging around. But before I do that, let's skip over here. That's lovely, isn't it? Pike of Stickle lit up. That would have been nice if just Pike of Stickle had been lit up and not everything else. It could happen, it could happen. It's gonna happen, I have faith. <laughs> it's worth pointing out as well that it's very rare to be up here and not see anybody. And as soon as I said that, I saw somebody. <laughs> Just coming up there, flipping neck, it's kicking off. Look at it. And I'm too busy showing you guys down here. <laughs> Honestly, I'm an idiot. But it is worth it, look at this. Just getting to the other end of the summit, the lower, end of the, the summit ridge, I guess you could say. And you're looking right back down into Pike Howe and the valley below. 
So you can pretty much see the whole route I've got today. Over to Pike Stickle, Loft Crag, go and have a look at Thorn Crag, and then back down to the valley via Raven Crag. Oh my goodness, look, look at it over there now. So this wasn't forecast, the rain wasn't forecast, it was just, you know, um, sun, cloud, but we are in the mountains and it makes its own weather. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get me waterproof jacket on, kind of waterproof as much as I can, stuff gear, and then just sit down and see what happens. Cause I think, yeah, quite a lot could happen or nothing. <laughs> we'll see. Well, that weather went really interesting there for a, a few minutes. <laughs> Just loads of this irritating drizzle. You know, either rain or don't rain. <laughs> but it's all starting to clear out again. I mean, as you can see, looking out towards the east, it's cleared out substantially, actually. And look at it. <laughs> I love that. I don't think you can get a photograph of that. It'd be very tricky to get a shot of that and make it look good because it would look flat. But looking at it with your eyes, it's very impressive. Love it. Moody as hell. So I think what I'm going to do is, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go down, where that hoodie is there, look, I'm going to pop down to there and sit and wait and see if now that the rain stops, see if it, um, we get a bit of sunlight on Piker Stickle. Well, I reached the hoodie and this happened. I mean, wow. Right. Don't want to go down that way there because there's a little bit of a scramble. So we need to go on this right hand path here, which is much more pleasant. Yes, that other way, if you'd come down the left hand side, it brings you down here. Not very enjoyable at all. So you can see the path we're going to be taking just down here, and it threads its way down into Harrison Coombe zigzagging all the way up to the bottom of uh, Pikestickle there. And we'll just pop up to the top and I'll look down into Mickledon. It's worth mentioning actually that, and I have mentioned it before in a previous video, that this whole area was once a Neolithic axe factory. Uh, up around Harrison Stickle, there's areas around here, but particularly around Pikestickle. Prehistoric man from about 4000 BC dug out rocks here to make um, axe heads. So what they do is they'd cut them out here, rough cut them, and then ended up trading them all around the country. I think it's something like 27% of all axe heads that archaeologists have excavated come from, originate in this area, you know, the stone. So they were, they were hewn out of the ground here, taken off to different places and polished and made into axe, axes and, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is like a real, you know, hub for that kind of industry 6,000 years ago it's crazy it's crazy when you think about it so what we'll do is we'll get over to Piker Stickle and as you approach as you approach the steps going up you can see the scree shoot running down into Mickledon and it's off there that a lot of rough cut axe heads were found um, back in like the 30s and 40s that kind of thing as you can see you do drop down quite a bit of height actually uh, before heading back up to Piker Stickle. So at the lowest point, we cross over the source of Dungeon Gill. This runs off down into that incredible ravine later on. Going down the path here, back down to the valley is beautiful. Right, let's head up to Piker Stickle. Sweat a little bit, just a tiny bit, and then uh, get freezing cold at the top. So <laughs> let's go. Here we go. First proper view of Piker Stickle. I love it. I love this little lump. <laughs> it's so iconic and you can see it from miles around the axe factory I was talking about earlier. And the scree shoot is down here. It's quite the drop, isn't it? So you can see, yeah, it's very loose. A loose scree and the little notch I mean even Wainwright mentions it it's around here somewhere right let's get up top and have a look down there are two main ways up here you can go right round 
um, the north side, I guess it is, and then up. But that's a bit tricky. It's a bit, um, it's a bit dodgy. We'll show you that in a minute. Or you can stop and you can head off this way. In fact, a bit further down up here. So not far from the, the stepped path, you get this thing. And I must admit, this has become much wider and more trodden on. I think what I might do is just switch on to wide view so you can see better. That's a bit wider now. Now it might look like it's really steep sides and stuff, but it's not. It's just looking to show a bit more. But you can see it's just <laughs> very simple steps up. I'm going to stop talking now and concentrate on breathing. And here we go. Up on the summit of Pika Stickle. Let me spin you around. Isn't that something else? Looking out towards Loft Crag. This is Loft Crag here, and you can see Gimmer Crag. Very popular rock climbers. In fact, I can see some climbers up there now. And obviously, we've got these incredible views in all directions. As you can see, it just drops off into oblivion. That's Mickledon down there, AKA Oblivion. Right, what I'll do is I'll put some archive drone footage on so you can see what it looks like from bird's eye. And then after that, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you what fails you can see from here with your eyes. Tall and very rare to have the place to yourself. <laughs> Worrying about my camera. <laughs> I keep banging it on rocks. What I'll do is I'll show you the other way up so you can make your own mind up. And then up there. So you can see it's a little bit more of a scramble. It's doable, I've done it a couple of times. But the easy way is the way I went. Look at that. This is what I want to show you as well. So step across here and down a bit. 
And look at this gully, flipping heck. See, most people don't come down here, they'll go and do pegstickle and then head off. But it's worth it if you can be bothered <laughs> to come and stand here and look down that. <laughs> it's incredibly dizzying and my knees went a little bit weak then, has to be said. And obviously looking back up. That's where I was a second ago. Okay, let's get on to um, Wasp Crag. And back onto the stepped path again. So I came in from this path here to go up Pikes to Goal, but this time branching off and go along the ridge to Lovecraft. It's such an amazing little peak that, isn't it? I love it. Look at the shape of it. And look at the light out there. Wow. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Loft Crag. That is very impressive, isn't it? Pike of Stickle there. And look at Great Gable in the background. A big dark mass. So, Gimmer Crag is just here. This is like the top of Gimmer Crag, really. So those rock climbers are, are down there. Ooh, look at it now. A little bit of light on Rosset Pike, but it is hazy. Fleeting. Things are happening, but fleetingly. Oh, it takes a couple of minutes to get down off um, Loft Crag and almost onto the path that's going to take us back down into the valley. But I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to head over to that lump there. So you could completely ignore this and any other bump on any other walk because it's not a Wainwright, but I think that'd be a really big mistake. Because quite often, some of the best views come from away from these Wainwright summits, you know. The other way off, down to the valley, is there. You can see some people walking down that path. That is a great path. And the view looking back down here as you walk down it is spectacular, actually. More so than the one I'm doing today. <laughs> Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't quite fit in with hitting Raven Crag because we're on the wrong side of Dungeon Gill, you see, so that's why. You know, Loft Crag here, uh, not so much Pike Stickle, and then Harrison Stickle, these form that iconic view that you can see of the Langdale Pikes from down Windermere Way, Ambleside, Bonus. And as you're coming down the valley here, you know, you get to Elter Water and you look, it's such an iconic view. I think everybody recognises that. Everybody who knows the Lake District recognises, ah, oh, that's the Langdale Pikes, or the Pikes. Ooh, wee. that loose stuff. All right, it kind of flattens out a little bit here. And if I remember rightly, it gets a little bit squelchy. <laughs> My right foot got completely soaked earlier on. Let's see if I can get my left foot wet as well. Wow, it's a completely different day now to what it was like when I was up there in the rain. <laughs> Look at it. It's absolutely red hot now. Red hot. I'm going to stop here for a few minutes, have a breather and a strip. Whew. Wow. feels better. Fleece off, bit of sun cream on, sun goes in. <laughs> I 
I'm a little bit concerned because these dogs here belong to a guy who uh, walked past me a bit earlier when I was creaming up and I can't find him, look. Where's he gone? Where's your dad? Where is he? Oh heck. It's a bit worrying because he went ahead of me. He was about five minutes ahead. And now they're looking for him. He had like a dog whistle. I wonder if I could... Did I hear it then? Let's go and have a look up. They're obviously expecting him to come down from up here. Where is he? Where's your dad? Where's your dad gone? Oh, I can hear him. I can hear the dog whistle. I think he's all right. Well, he's got breath in his lungs. Whether he's all right or not, I don't know. Where's the other one? The other one's gone. All right, so one of them's there and he stopped. He's waiting to hear the whistle. I'm waiting to hear the whistle. <laughs> and another one went up there, his other dog. Look at that sheep up there. Oh, he's right down there. I can hear it right down there. Right, and I keep going down. They don't seem to be responding to him though. They keep running up here for some reason. There's a rock up there, right? I've seen it before on a previous walk. And it looks like someone stood there with a backpack on. It's really, really spooky. And I wonder if that's spooking them out, actually. I wonder if that is actually freaking them. Because look, it's back up again. Where are you going? This way. Come on. I need to go and find where that whistle's coming from because if he's on the path, and he's just around this corner, that's fair enough. He's just finding his dogs. But if he's kind of slipped and fallen and he's just blowing his whistle. Dramas. Oh, here we go. There's one. Where's your... Where's your bro? Come on, keep going. Come on, go and find him. He's down there. Go and find him. Can you see him? There we go. The other one's just here. There's the other one, look. That's it. Go on. Come on. There's your dad, go. <laughs> no, you're alright. Phew. <sighs> At least they're alright. At least he's all right. At least everybody's all right. Oh, it's getting busy. It's getting very busy now, look. Yeah. Um, probably. <laughs> Might be a while, like. <laughs> You're all right, so thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I got really busy then. Really, really busy. And I feel like my face must look like a giant toma tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato. It's so hot here because there's not a breath of wind here. If I recall, where he is now, the path branches off and goes down to Raven Crag. Right, here we are at that point. So that's where that guy was there. And I'm just going to head down to. I mean, it's not really much of a path, it's more of a, a trod, like a sheep trod. But you can kind of see it. And then we're going to go to those rocks down and then through more bracken. Trouble is, last time I was here, it was winter and there was no bracken, so I'm kind of hoping that I haven't made a boob <laughs> and picking this route that's just going to end up me being covered in our little blood-sucking friends. It's weird, isn't it, how, I mean, when I was here with, I think it was with Finn, so I was kind of worried about her flying off. I'm pretty sure this was just... Just grass, you know. All right, let's not morning. <laughs> but you can see, there's the pub, just down there, look. And the van is amongst that lot. It's just, honestly, it's one of the best views, I think, when you get to here with these pine trees and Raven Crag. I mean, it just looks like you, you could be anywhere. You could be somewhere in the US. Now, concentrate, because there's a style around here somewhere. Uh, ah, here we go. Rickety. <laughs> Rickety is an understatement. I mean, if push comes to shove, it looks like I could go under the fence rather than over. Because that, that's not too bad. I think I'm going to go under, you know, because <laughs> it's... That fence is wobbly. There's a very, very large drop there. If this collapses, which it could, because I'm kind of heavy um i'm gonna go and keep on going i won't stop until i get well probably to the pub <laughs> get your bag off dude there's no way <laughs> get the food in there put that on right let's get the bag that's great can you see the climbers on raven crag just there but look at this 
view. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? And imagine it in winter. Okay, time to head down. It's a little bit steep here, so if you do come and do this route, just be really, really careful at this point. Look at that. That is a big drop, by the way. <laughs> it's not just this camera making it look a big drop, it is, so just be, re again, really careful here. And then we go out onto the open scree. And um, we're pretty much heading, I don't know if you can see the climber there, we're heading to that point there. In fact, you can see like a, a like a, a little banister or balustrade or something like that. God, it's, it's low. Oh, just got spiked by the gorse. Right, I've just realised that I've left my sunglasses up there. <laughs> Seriously, at the um, that style, the one I went under, took my glasses off, put them on the ground, thought, well, better pick them up. So if you ever do do this route, if you find a pair of glasses, just take them down and throw them in the bin, will you? <laughs> you know, pretty much whew, end of life anyway, so I'm just more bothered about the fact that I've left a lump of plastic up there, you know. Okay, I'm almost down. It's going to get a whole lot busier now. There's going to be people everywhere because obviously I'm heading right into the lion's den as it were. <laughs> um, so I'll wrap up now. Listen, I hope you've enjoyed this one. This is a classic walk, classic route, classic weather as well. And yeah, I hope you can get out and do it. As always, like I always say, the route is in the description and uh, you can follow along using the OS app. But stick around and see if you can guess what pint I'm going to have. <laughs> you know where I'm going, so I've kind of ruined that bit. But see if you can guess what I'm going to go for drinks-wise. I don't even know. Let's have a look. As I reached the pub, it dawned on me that it was still really early and most people were probably still out on the hill. So the pub was unusually quiet. Give it a few more hours and this place will be absolutely rammed. Mm -hmm.